Hi again. Now we're going to look at um, both of those variables, those explanatory variables at once, the genera and the size of this small part of the gut. Um, and we'll be building up to ask if the relationship between the, small, the, the size of the small part of the gut and weight depends or differs between, between, between species. So we're going to need to do a linear model that includes both of the explanatory variables. So here we are, just where we were. Now, first of all, let's make a graph that can tell us about um, whether this relationship looks like it differs between the genera. So it's just as before with aesthetics, x equals, oops, um, that's margin oomph, y equals log 10, and also here, this is new, we're going to put in here, colour is gaptong. And we'll do geome points. Oh, point. Does that run? Yes, perfect. Um, so here, this is the, this is the new part. We're colouring, we're asking R to map the gaptong variable, that's LN or OC, onto the colour of the points. And here is what we got what we get. <clears throat> um, now looking at this, it doesn't appear to me like there's massive differences in the relationships uh, for the green points and the blue points and the red points. They seem like they might all lie along the same general line. Um, there might be a bit of a difference with the green with the green points being a bit lower here. This relationship here being a bit lower and these being the same, um, but um, that's my first impression here. And this means that when we get the, the the small part of the worm from the poop, we don't need to know which which genera it belongs to. Which would be great if we didn't have to know that because it could be quite difficult to identify that from the small part of the worm that comes out of the badger poop. So that's what that's what we're guessing. Okie dokie. We'll start now with the simpler of the two models we're going to look at. Um, and <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we'll call that M3, a linear model, as usual. Log 10 gavict. As usual, I'm setting a very bad example um, in my R coding. I'm not putting lots of comments in to say what I'm doing. Again, I'm doing that because uh, to save time, um, but you should do it. Uh, yes, you should put comments in. I usually do, and uh, some of the example scripts that you'll get to see of mine, you'll see that there are comments in there. So now we have... Um, this is the continuous explanatory variable, so this would just be straightforward regression like we've already done. And we use the plus sign to put in another explanatory variable now. Um, and we'll put um, get on the other one that we've got, dd. We'll run that. Now, what have we done is the question. Um, what is this model that we've now fit? And I've got this drawn graphically to show you. So um, let's do half. Let's do half of this first. Uh, so essentially, this is this this is what um, we fit before uh, a one intercept, one slope model to to the whole data, and so we forced um, each of the genera to have exactly the same slope and actually the same intercept. Um, these, these would lie exactly on top of each other. Just for the purposes of this diagram, they're, they're a little bit separated, but one slope, one intercept. And what we're doing now is instead um, a, um, a model where we've got a possible effect of, of the genera um, and, a, and separately a possible effect of the uh, size of that small part of the gut. Um, so we've got both of those, um, but separately. And that's essentially saying, is there a difference in the intercepts, the height of these lines, 
and is there effect of uh, the uh, continuous exponential variable, so what is the slope? Um, so they all have the same slope, so it's a three intercept, one slope model. <clears throat> Let's get back to R. So three intercepts, one slope, that's four parameters, so we're expecting 139 degrees of freedom for this model. Let's look, just check, as usual, the residuals and the QQ plot. Okay, the QQ plot's a bit better than it was before. Often adding explanatory variables makes the residuals better, better looking. That's one reason why we didn't have to be too concerned earlier, because we knew we still had explanatory variables to put in. Now let's look at the summary table. Now we know there's four things being estimated here. Three intercepts, one slope. So we're expecting uh, three row, uh, sorry, four rows in that summary table. And perfect. We've got, just as we expected, four rows. And they are the rows that we've already seen in the two separate models. Here is the slope. That was the row that we already got from the linear regression model. And here are the two differences between N and L. This, again, this is the reference category intercept, so L. So this is, as, just as before, this is the difference between the intercept for L and N. And this is the difference between the intercept for OC and L. <clears throat> okay, and here's our degrees of freedom, 139 as we expected. We've now got nearly 76% uh, of the variability explained, so we're doing quite well. And we can see that the, uh, the slope is very significant, so we've still got this very significant um, explan explanatory power of the um, circumference of the gut for weight. And we've also got um, a a lower intercept for n um, than l. Let's just check our graph, see if that looked like it might be the case. n, yeah, that's the one that we thought might be a little bit lower, so that's actually coming out um, um, as, as we expected, though I actually did say that I expected it to just all be on top of each other. This one does, that does look a little bit lower. So um, that, looks all, that looks all fine. Okay, there's one more model now that we can do. We'll call it M4. LM, well, let's copy this. It's easier to copy this. Need the bracket there. So instead of the plus here, we're going to put a asterisk. And what does that do? Well, I'll show you again graphically. So the model we fitted, um, you just saw us fit, was three intercepts, one slope. That was with the plus. What it allows is there to be a main effect of the continuous variable, size of the small part of the gut, and a main effect of, um, of the genera, so different heights of those lines. Um, those, those two are called main effects. What it doesn't allow is the lines to have different slopes. And what we just did is made a model where the lines can have different slopes. So essentially we fitted three regression lines. So we've got three intercepts and three slopes, an intercept and a slope for each of those three regression lines. So now we're really asking is, does the effect or does the relationship between um, the size of that small part of the gut and weight differ, does the relationship differ depending on genus, the, the genera of the worm. Okay, so let's, let's get back to R, see what that looks like. Well, first, again, we do the auto plot. Check the model diagnostics. Oh, I haven't run, you see I got an error object m4 not found because I didn't run this line yet. There's auto plot m4. If anything it should look even better. 
yeah, the, the normal QQ plot looks, looks very nice now. A little bit of deviation, but nothing to, to worry about. Most of the data points are along that line. There's little evidence of pattern in the residuals. Um, if anything, there's more spread here than out here, and that's what we're seeing down here with a decreasing relationship. Um, <clears throat> uh, but nothing too bad to worry about, honestly. That looks um, just, just fine. Now let's look at the summary table. Now how many rows are we expecting here? Um, we're expecting uh, three intercepts and three slopes, that's six rows. Um, and how many degrees of freedom? Well, it'd be 143, that's how many data points, minus six, which is 137. So we're expecting 137 degrees of freedom. There we go, 137 degrees of freedom, perfect. You'll note that we haven't got much of an increase in explanatory power. So adding this complexity to the model of having slopes that can differ depending on genus hasn't given us a lot of uh, much of a better model. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now in the coefficients table, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Brilliant. Three intercepts, three slopes, or, or the equivalent of three intercepts and three slopes. Um, here is the intercept for L, just as before. Here is the um, the slope, this is now this is the importantly, this is the slope for L. It doesn't say that, but it is the slope for L. Again, it's the reference slope here. Now here is the intercept, oh sorry, here is the difference between the intercept of L and the intercept of N. That's just before. Here is the difference between the intercept of OC and the intercept of L. And now you see these. These are new, new this time round. So we know that these got these have got to do something with the slopes. And actually, what this so th so this is the continuous explanatory variable, and this is the n category of the genus, the the categorical explanatory variable. And uh, can you guess what this is? It's not actually the slope of the relationship, but it's the difference between the slope for n and the slope for l. Remember this here is the reference slope and that's for l because it comes alphabetically first. So the reference slope, uh, that of l, genus l is 0.27 and here, just I'm saying that again, this is the difference between the slope of n and the slope of l. So to get the actual slope for n we would add this to 0.27 and it's exactly the same here for OC. This is the difference between the slope, this here, this row here is the difference between the slope of OC and the slope of L. And what we can see here is both of these rows um, have estimates that are quite small relative to the standard their standard errors, and that's resulting in their statistical significance being rather low. Um, so this is evidence that, or, or the, this means that there's relative relative lack of evidence that there are different slopes for those uh, different species. That these are not statistically significant from zero, and zero would mean there's no difference between the slope of n and the reference slope of L, and the slope of OC, and the reference slope. Um, <clears throat> so that confirms what we just thought, which is that, that the, the R squared, the explanatory power of the model, hasn't gone up much when we did this and put the interaction, that's what it's called, when the slopes can differ, we put in an interaction. We've not gained much in explanatory power with the interaction. Let's just check that again. It's 0.76 here, and previously it was, well, 0.76. We've gained virtually nothing um, by putting the, um, uh, the different slopes in, or the interactions. These are the interaction terms of the model here. So that is uh, how things look when we uh, put in um, uh, the time here, yeah, the, the asterisk, rather than the plus. So the plus means please use only the main effects. We've got a main effect of margin and 
and a main effect of Gaton. And here we do the main effects and the interaction. Okie dokie. So that is, uh, that's about it. So now you've seen models, uh, linear models that contain both explanatory variable, both continuous and categorical explanatory variables. Uh, one thing remains, of course, and that's to make a beautiful plot um, showing these results. And we'll use what we did before, which is here. Copy that down to the bottom. And the only thing we need to add to this, do you remember what this did? I'll just show you what this, this did, what we previously did. Um, <clears throat> so we have uh, this was the the regression plot uh, where we ignored the uh, the genera that the species came from, and so to here we just need to add color equals, and it was a gatong. I'm going to run all of that again, and look there. A uh, GG plot is just amazing, really. So it's every uh, th this having the color according to gatong has basically said to geome smooth, please do a different regression line for each of the categories. And so it's automatically done that for us. And you can see what we found in the model. The slopes are relatively similar between the three categories, uh, but the N it has a lower intercept. It's a lower line um, than, than, N and o, uh, than L and OC. So we're getting a lot of correspondence between the model that we've done and the figure that we've um, that we've made, which is of course very good. Okay, just uh, to recap and summarize then, um, you've seen a linear model with a categorical explanatory variable and continuous explanatory variable and linear models with only main effects with the plus sign and with interaction terms when you put the asterisk in. Um, okay, so Biologically, what does this mean? What does it mean about badgers and poo and earthworms? Uh, well, it's not great news um, because we do actually need to know if the small part is coming from species N or the other two species because we've got a different relationship there. So um, the next thing we'd have to find out if we're doing research on this is actually whether we can tell from that small part of the gut that we find in the badger poo um, we can tell whether that belongs to species N or or one of the other two. Um, so a bit more research to do, a bit more digging around in badger poo. <laughs>